It is my great pleasure to be here this morning at the Korea University, one of the most distinguished universities in Korea, for having opportunity to meet you and having times with you to think of China and its relationship with Korea. As already introduced a while ago, I spent all together eight years and uh, four years and eight months in China. First, from August 99 to 2002 February, I was then a Minister for Political Affairs at the Korean Embassy in Beijing. And second, almost 10 years after my first foreign assignment in Beijing, from uh, May 2011 to June 2013 as ambassador. This means I was able to witness the rapid change, significant economic development of China at the beginning of 21st century. Now, China has become to be called a G2 country. Such rapid change we can find simply with comparison of lengths of highways between uh, the almost none at the beginning of 21st century and last year 130,000 kilometers during only 16 years. Chinese continue to build highways reaching to the total length 130 kilometers. It was indeed 2001 when the first highways was constructed in China connecting Beijing and Beidaihe. That city is well known for summer vacation for the high-ranking officials of Chinese Communist Party. Even these days too, they gathered together, having holidays with their family, but well known to be the place for discussion and finding some conclusion for the party's meeting in the coming fall. The length of highway built in 2001 was approximately 250 kilometers. I was then minister for the first time in my life and never ever again since then, I drove a car with the high speed reaching 190 kilometers per hour, satisfying my curiosity what could I feel if I drove a car with high speed? My car was old, five years or six years used already, but it was, after all, Mercedes-Benz. I came to feel that my car seemed to sink down, generating heavy but very fast-moving sentiment. Of course, I was not a driver, test driver, I mean, but no big noise came out, but not long enough. I could, I thought, momentarily, I could feel such a high, how to feel, how to drive with a, such a high speed. It was a really exciting experience but it was lured by empty but straight highway with few vehicles there. So uh, even, my, even nowadays, I thought I enjoyed that moment with a thrilling fear. Nowadays, however, China is the top manufacturer of car and its sales is the largest in the world, last year, China produced 
28 million units, and its sales is almost the same number. Anyone of you is aware how many total number of car registration in Korea is last year? It's approximately 20 million plus some. So every year, China manufactured over 20 million car and its sales is the same number. Having said this outset, let me brief what I'm going to do this morning under the subject of Korea and China relations. My presentation consists of two parts. First, I like to see what is meaningful fact of China with which we could understand more and hopefully clearer and get to the real picture about China. And second, I would like to focus on Korea-China relations, which comprise, first, general sketch on the bilateral relations with statistical some information, and second, background and reason why relations go fast and uh, very continuously developed. And third, I like to draw some reasons behind which, uh, which affect sometimes negatively. And again, bilateral relations, why bilateral relations are so important to each other? And then what they are going to do, keep and attain for better relations. And lastly, about direction in the future, to strengthen, how to strengthen the relations between Korea and China. By the way, I, I heard that the, there are about 40 Chinese students in this class, except the Chinese students. How many of you have visited China? Okay, one, two, about 15. Then let me ask once again to raise your hand if you ever visited Russia. Are there Russian students here? Oh, no region. Okay. Well, Russia, in fact, Russia is very important Korea. And uh, Russia is also uh, well known as vast land, uh, many beautiful places and many beautiful and historic sites and stories. And then Korea has a uh, lot of substantive business with Russia. Uh, but last year, just more than 300,000 uh, people of both countries to pay a visit to each other. Even there are good agreement namely visa abolishment agreement. Due to the retaliatory action taken by Chinese government in relating to third terminal altitude, high altitude air defense system in Korea, the Chinese business number has been sharply decreased this year. However, I believe there would be about 5 million who come to visit Korea this year. Also, Korean side, Koreans are showing some descending sign to visit China. However, it will reach sometime in eight, 3 million, altogether 8 million. This simple number of visits implies, quote unquote, destined relationship between Korea and China, together with the total volume, trade volume of 300 billions, not small in size, sooner or later. So with these two factors, I'd like to elaborate when we talk about Korea-China Korea -China relations later. But I'd like to first 
uh, the first part, China at glance. What do you have in your mind when you think about first China? Population, huge population, maybe, and Chinese Communist Party. I'd like to point out as its first and foremost characteristics that, quote, Communist Party exercise overall leadership of all areas. And China tries to be, tries best to, quote, secure success of socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era, unquote, and works hard to build a great modern socialist country. These are what President Xi Jinping mentioned in his lengthy report to the 19th National Congress of Communist Party of China held quite recently, October 18th this year. Then we are facing a question, what is Chinese characteristics? Some would argue that it is the excuse for China uh, that there is only one party which seems to be against the spirit of democracy. I also believe one party system must be included in the Chinese characteristics, but not enough. As we assume the, the population, 1.4 billion population world biggest, and its vast land with 55 minority ethnic. And then their economic explosive development reaching enough to be called a G2 country. And the last but not least, their socialist economic market economy. I think those four items could be referred to their peculiar identity in nowadays. In each report at the party congress on October 18th, General Secretary Xi introduced with pride the accomplishment which he has made during his five-year term and articulate the tasks, challenges, visions, and direction which China will pursue and acquire for building, quote, a moderately prosperous society in all respect in 2021 when they celebrate 100th anniversary of foundation of Communist Party of China and for securing, quote, success of socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era in 2049, when they will again celebrate 100th anniversary of establishment of People's Republic of China. This means Chinese concentrates his endeavor and national energy to make nation first, middle income class country, whereof society in 2021 and secondary reach in 2049, the modern socialist country advanced society. I think uh, I have chapter first in advance. To this end, China continues to conduct four-pronged comprehensiveness with the 13th five-year economic development plan, which General Secretary Xi put as, quote, changing a path of rapid growth to a stage of high quality in his report. In foreign policy side, 
China likes to show his confidence to be one of major country, making known his intention to play more actively in international affairs and making more contribution to, quote, building community with a shared future of mankind. Through the last party congress, General Secretary Xi seems to be very successful in power consolidation because the Standing Committee of Political Bureau has been composed with several his close subordinate who worked for C in ideological sector, organizational affairs, and his secretariat. You see, I feel regret that I fully translate uh, the, his position and uh, graduate and which, gra which university he graduated on the chart. You know, Mr. Xi, the gen president, general secretary of the party, Rico Chang, prime minister. He's from the young generation of the Communist Party. He's been secretary of Hanan province and Yaoning. And he's graduated from Beijing University while President Xi comes from Tsinghua. And newly elected as a member of standing committee, Li Jansu has been working for Xi Jinping quite a long time as Secretary General of the Presidents. And thus Wang Yang, former Deputy Prime Minister, now become mostly. I think this position will be endorsed, I mean, will be uh, decided when there is a National Assembly, National Congress held in sometime um, next year, normally in March. So Chairman CPPCC Wang Yang, former Deputy Prime Minister, now take the fourth rank of the Standing Committee of the Political Bureau. And new entry, Wang Huing, is a, uh, he's uh, I think uh, ideologist. He's uh, provide all the ideological background close to Xi Jinping. And Zhao Lezi, he used to be the uh, secretary of Xi'an province, I mean, uh, Sanxi province, and took uh, office at the uh, Central Committee working for organization. I think he's a very powerful man during his uh, uh, secretary, I mean, the, uh, uh, what do you say, minister in the uh, Central Committee, now becoming another important and powerful Secretary Central Disciplinary Commission who was uh, done by Mr. Wang, Ch Wang Chisan, who retired from the Standing Committee, but the, he's the uh, person to make, I mean, to, to combat against corruption, his full power. And he's also very close to uh, the President Xi. And Han Zheng is now the mayor, I mean this, the secretary of Shanghai city. So why I described the composition of standing committee is close to Xi Jinping. In the previous time, each member has their own identical position. But now we see the seven members standing committees. There are three who work closely before becoming member of standing committee. That means Xi Jinping was quite successful in composing, I mean, the, in the uh, power, in terms of power cons, uh, the consolidation. Some believe, including myself, no designation of possible success in the standing committee. Something would be relating to the his ambition after his second term as general secretary of the party. This phenomenon asks us whether she really has intention to run for another five years in 2022, which is obviously against a precedence which Deng Xiaoping designed to set up, and it was well observed so far. So we have to wait and see with great attention 
and high interest. Now we will see some economic data of China in order to grasp present status in terms of economic power and understand more clearly about China. First, the GDP, gross domestic product. As you see, China has become second since 2010. But isn't it interesting to see China, 10 years ago, ranked number four? So 10 years, his, his volume of GDP was not reaching to that of Japan. Japan, as you see, uh, yeah, yeah, four trillion, four, nearly five trillion, while the China's tr the GDP is 11 trillion next to the United States. Uh, in this connection, let me point out Korea at number 11, 1.4 trillion. Why Russia, such a biggest country in the world, and uh, one, 130 million population? Well, it's because the rapid exchange rate fluctuation. Uh, their GDP, nominal GDP, turned down to the 13th ranks with 1.24. The Economist, world famous and authentic British magazine, once projected in the end of 2012, at the year of 2018, GDP of China and GDP of US would be the same under the condition, you know, China Real GDP growth rate 7.75, while US 2.5, and inflation rate 4 to 1.5, and UN appreciation 3% annual basis. But when I was in Beijing, the exchange rate about $1 per, $1 is about 6.45 yuan, but it's almost the same. So their projection, the condition for projection by economists was not Correct. So anyhow, the so the gap between the GDP of China and the United States almost seven trillion sum. This gap was not shrinked for some years. So it may sound it's not directly linked to subject matters, but we are reminded of at uh, this, uh, uh, the statistics, the magnitude of American economic power. The, during even the Economist has uh, projected in 2012, saying that around 2018, of course, under this uh, well, condition, but I don't believe it would happen in a decade, maybe 20 years after or 30 years after. We take a look. Uh, we take a look. Uh, the China's GDP trend. I mean, growth rate. Well, it's remarkable. You understand this? 2007 and 8, particularly 2008, world was hit by the uh, great economic crisis, while the but China continues to make a high growth rate, 9.6. And then even. 2012, they declared, okay, we don't want high growth rate. We like to have, a, what do you say, medieval, medieval, medium size, I mean, medium growth rate, like around 7.5. But their record shows 7.8, 7.7. And now from 15, they marked, uh, their target is 6.5, but this year also again 6.8. So such a Big scale of GDP reaching 1. Point, I mean 11 trillions makes a 6 percent over 6 percent, 7 percent growth rate annually is, I would say, remarkable. We are all aware 
that Chinese export has been number one for a long time. Uh, in 2014 and 15, their total volume of trade has been number one in the world. But this, I mean, last year, it gave it, China gave it back to the United States because of uh, large difference in import part. Uh, the, of course, the China has uh, the number one export items quite absolutely big in 2015. I have only the statistics in 2015, but last year almost same true, uh, the situation. Absolutely, China got number one, 1,762, while the second is 638. Korea, number 14, 16 at the rank. Automobile section. Well, as I already explained that last year they produced and sell, sold 28 million units more. This is the picture of Korean made. Beijing Hyundai uh, company uh, with this uh, brand name Lang Tung. Well, there are the Chinese uh, students here, but Lang means pleasant, Tung means uh, moving. Pleasant moving is a medium-sized sedan, which was sold quite well in China with a market share of 8 to 9 percent annually until last year. This year, partly due to the, well, the anti-Korean products mood relating to a third problem, uh, Hyundai has a big problem there but now recovering very slowly. So I hope uh, that the, any uh, Korean company in uh, China doesn't have, will not have a big problem anymore. Uh, China has been possessing largest the foreign exchange for a long time, and its amount cannot be compared to anyone. Second largest larger holder is Japan with about one trillion, and third is Switzerland with about 785 billions. While Korea, uh, we don't have a figure here, ninth with 384 billions. It's not small, but the uh, China absolutely excel others in foreign exchange reserve. You can see the sharp increase of foreign direct investment since 2010 amounting to 100 billions over. And it continues year by year. This is main source, one of the main source which uh, stimulate the development, economic development of China. Interesting thing to note, Hong Kong, Hong Kong altogether. I think there is a mistype. 1 trillion 097, 097, not 900. Hong Kong has been first investor, largest investor uh, to China. And then this Hong Kong, Singapore, and Taiwan have some similarity. Those three countries, a lot of uh, Chinese ethnic nationals were there and entrepreneur. Uh, they are rushing to make investment in mainland China, which are instrumental for the Chinese development there. You see, last year, 77% of FDI comes from Hong Kong, Singapore, and Taiwan. You know, the Hong Kong was returned to 1997 after 150 year British governance. At the time, many worried that Hong Kong money would exodus to Canada 
United States and some here because of red Chinese rule. Without the policy of one country, two systems declared by Deng, Deng Xiaoping, I don't believe that China could secure the financial resources from Hong Kong, which was instrumental in nation building, nation development. From this viewpoint, I'm firmly believed, I'm firmly convinced that the present modern China cannot be possible without the Dong's insight, policy, and wisdom indeed, which Chinese would uh, call it as theory, Dong's theory. not only in quantitative basis, but in qualitative basis, China begins to excel others, particularly in patent registration, in both in domestic and both in and in international. And their supercomputer is already five to six years that Chinese supercomputer excelled American supercomputer in speed. I can't find, I can't find words in English, I mean the, the, the speed, yeah, there are several, uh, what do you say, the words to show the how fast, but I can't imagine how fast it is, but anyhow, there is a international competition among supercomputers and in, in the United States, Texas, Austin, I believe. And then the Chinese supercomputer excel others for already five years. That means China cannot be described as cheaper manufacturer, but they continue to develop their technology, yeah. well, which is up keeping, which keep abreast with the quantitative, quantitative development by themselves. You see, China continued to augment the number of company, though, although those, most of them are state-owned enterprise, to be listed in the 500 companies well, in the world by Fortune American Magazine. Last year, it was 103. First, over 100, while US 134, Korea, together with Switzerland, 15. So 500 leading companies in the world was comprised of two 100 over from United States and Japan, uh, China. That's the same as the GDP, over 10 trillion there are only two countries, China and the United States. Of course, there are a big uh, gap between the US and China. But the third, now the Japan, nearly five trillion, cannot be possible to reach the 10 trillion in maybe decades or two decades. I'm not sure. Now the transportation network is uh, amazing, remarkable. As I already explained, at the beginning of 21st century, there is none, almost. Of course, there are some beltways covering the city around. Beijing city has a lot of, I think, three or four beltways already constructed there. But uh, the uh, substantive construction of highway starts at the beginning of 21st century and reaching to how many? 130,000 kilometers covering. Well, this is the desert and mount, high mountains area, so all the cities are connected with highways, which, I mean, the function as artery of modernization of industry, as was well in Korea as was the case in Korea, true, we built first 
Gyeongbu Highway in 1970. 70. I remember the date of the completion was July 7 in 1970, 430 kilometers, and which function really as artery of our industry modernization. Another remarkable scene is the high-speed railway network. The first railway network was built in August 2008. So within 10 years, within 10 years, it's not yet 10 years had passed until, I mean, they uh, completed over 22,000, 22,000 kilometers altogether. Yeah, here. Over nearly, I think it's about 200 kilometers per hour. Normally, high speed is meaning is meant uh, 300 kilometers per hour, but uh, I think the total 22,000 kilometers include over 200 kilometers per hour is regarded as a high speed railway. When I was in Beijing, I visited Tianjin above the expressway, express train. Then I met uh, Vice Mayor Lin and said, well, it's uh, well, remarkable, it's amazing. It took me only 30 minutes uh, to be here. Then Vice Mayor Lin replied right away, no, Mr. Ambassador, it's not 30 minutes, but 28 minutes, he replied. So I very much expressed, impressed, you know. The 22,000 kilometer is longer than those sum of second ranked country up to 10th ranked of the country. So we can imagine how long, how serious they are to build uh, the express train network. In military side, their budget seems to be number second, I'm a number two next to the United States. If we think about comprehensive uh, military power, including strategic weaponry, maybe third next to Russia. But important thing is that China can afford, build, and uh, strengthen its military capability and capacity year by year. So far, we've checked some typical figures which may help us to understand more clear about China and a better picture of Chinese economic power. With this in mind, I'd just like to draw your attention tasks and challenges China faces nowadays. First, political side. We'll have to watch on what's going on in power consolidation. How far will or can Xi Jinping exercise his identical power? Whether he dares to ignore a presence of not for third term as president and general secretary of party is, well, interesting point which we have to watch closely. What will be next surprising news in terms of combating against corruption? To purify the party and the setting rule and discipline for the members are imminent and very important task to China and Secretary Xi himself, but sometimes uh, it is uh, well criticized or sometimes accused of its political background and also its motivation. There are ample tasks and challenges in the uh, economic side 
as is the case in many cases. I'm of the strong view that China can manage and keep its development with relatively high growth rate. We better believe its economy is expanding, continue to be expanding enough to become very strong competitor in many, many areas. In 2015, 2015, over 55 aged population is 144 million. 144 million people already reach over 65 years old. In China, passing 10% of total population. I don't add any particular problem with that. Chinese government officially dropped out a policy of one child for a family at that same year. Every winter, all cities in China have a bigger and more serious trouble with the air. Already, Chinese government paid a lot to keep the city from uh, pollution, but um, regrettably, I don't believe it, will, it would work well. And then that pollution is not limited to the air. So the President Xi stressed importance to make nation, to make land beautiful, free from pollution in his party report. He also emphasized necessity of good and fair and equal education and opportunity to citizens and to become a major country in the world politics eventually asks China, I believe, many things common or special, in particular among them to respect universal value like democracy, human rights, and freedom of press. Korea is located to Chinese neighbor, regardless of like or dislike. We are remain as a neighboring country to each other for good. When I, visit, when I met the former Vice Premier Zhang Bian in Beijing, he described the relations between China and Korea is destined in relationship, is under the destined relationship. Uh, yes, we are the neighbor. Sh we are neighbors sharing lengthy border and long history of exchange, business, and sometimes love and hatred relations. More than four thousand years. This background helps us to normalize our bilateral relations very fast and in comprehensive manner when we uh, finish, when complete the rupture of eight decades of relations in 1992. During the last 25 years of diplomatic relations, our two countries amazed others with conclusion of strategic partnership, which have been well exemplified in the continuous increase of exchange of people and goods. Let's see first the trade part. Most of them signified Increasing size, 10, 116, 34, 45. Now 15 and 16, mostly due to the uh, fluctuation of world and the trade. Now coming back this year, I think more than 13% increase uh, than previous year. 
You see, China, Korea's number one trade partner. The export total 27% is comprised by the Korean export to China, while 21% for import. Total, one quarter of trade is made by the trade with China. While the Korea's fifth investor and first importing country and fourth largest trade partner of China. But if we exclude Hong Kong, the Korea is number three next to Japan, United States. And investor already we saw number three, except, I mean, exclude the Hong Kong and Singapore, which are more or less the Chinese ethnic nationals. So both are very big, important partner to each other. Some argue that the Korea too much rely on trade with China. It is correct expression, description. However, I believe that's not, well, the in, in intentional decreasing effort will not be wise and desirable, nor works well. Rather, uh, we better make efforts widen our, the market worldwide. It's stupid then we lose the, such a closest, I mean, the merit and advantage that we are the closest position to uh, the biggest consumer market, which is growing day by day, not only in quantitatively, but also in qualitatively. People's exchange is also very noticeable. In 2014, for the first time, the both, I mean, visitors crossed the uh, 10 million, 10 million per year. From China to Korea, 6 million, while Koreans to China, 4 million, passing 10 million. And next year, also 10 million. Well, out of 50 million Korean, 4 million uh, every year visiting China is great number. Out of 1.4 billion, 5 or 6 million is not big enough. So I expect, I, when I was in Beijing, I uh, often told, well, out of your 10%, the 1.4 billion, it's going to be over 10 million uh, Chinese could pay a, a visit to Korea. But you see that this year, quite shrink, 40%. Well, I don't say, I don't want to say the reason why. But last year, 12 million, 8 million comes to Korea, while 4 billion. Uh, this year, well, regrettably, some decrease, but uh, I believe, I do believe that the trend is unavoidable. There will be, well, the more China grows, the more Chinese tour around the world. And the same in, in Korea case, and then we expect more Chinese would come and uh, deepening understanding of people and then having a good business with them. We are the good partner to each other. Uh, bearing this basic fact in mind, let me analyze briefly reasons behind, which stimulate cross and cooperative bilateral relations and those affecting it adversely. As you see, I took the six items each. Plus positive and minus negative. Always North Korean factors could be a serious cause which affects either, I mean, negatively and sometimes positively. The necessity to find the solution vis-a-vis -vis the 
North Korea nuclear questions, ironically, give more chances, more opportunities for the government official to have a talks, more time to discuss, more time to exchange views on that issues. That's, I think, in result, that result in uh, the widening the conglomerate, widening the, uh, the, uh, the common aspects between two of us. So the North Korean factor normally provides uh, some negative aspect to bilateral relations uh, between two of us, but sometimes the uh, different result could be found. Uh, well, the many headache absolutely comes from North Korean factor. And sometimes Chinese geopolitical strategy on the Korean Peninsula, particularly vis-a-vis -vis United States, constantly poses a difficulties to be narrowed. Korea and China relatively, I mean, belonging to the emerging group. So this, all, this factor could make us more cooperative in international arena. But at the same time, Korea has struggled uh, to accomplish democratization together with economic development, economic modernization. South Korea's uh, South Korea's uh, longing aspiration for universal value of and on provides a source of disagreement with China. Both countries are important to each other. I firmly believe. I believe, I, I want to the both people should be aware of the fact I have seven items why both are mutually precious, needed, and need to be amicable to each other. Both share common geographical interest. First and foremost, maintenance of peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula and peaceful solution of North Korea nuclear question. Both better keep and encourage partnership for building a better state, prosperous state through economic development. Korea is, I believe, good reference to China in many areas, dealing with such agenda as rural development, environment preservation, human rights protection, and some financial matters, cultural contents, and some industrial sectors. Korea's faithful observance of some policy relating to Chinese, the core national interest, has to be much valued. For Korea, China is very important country not only in economic perspective but also in security and foreign affairs you know how to secure form support and understanding on issues concerned has always been great tasks korea should undertake with the expectation of good outcome As long as two countries are bound to be good to each other for their own sake, what does both countries have to do for attaining more desirable relations? I have in mind the following. First, though it may sound strange because it is a matter of fact, both should understand more each other. The prerequisite for better bilateral relations is to deepening mutual understanding, mutual trust, and mutual respect. 
Second, both should never hesitate to seek for common prosperity. And then the third, not least, both should have good neighbor policy in mind, always in mind. I believe that is a starting point to many, many difficult questions. I believe both countries can be better positioned to get closer and deeper ties if they precisely understand the other's typical situation. For Korea, number one typical phenomena is more than 70 years division of land. Well, I wonder how many years you've been in Korea, but if you read any newspaper, there is continuous, continuous news concerning some conflicts or dispute oriented, I mean, comes coming from the ideological background. So division of land is the uh, very serious, critical the phenomena which Korea should endure. And second, Korea is advocating universal value. As I already explained, universal value is consists of human rights, protection, well, democracy, and freedom of press. So we acquire by struggle. So we have good reason to encourage so that's the second typical phenomena we are situated in. And third one, on the contrary, we are belonging to emerging group. The second and third is, seems to be very contradictory. The Korea phenomena lies with, in the contradictory situation. One, for something close to established group, one for newly emerging group. For China, Korea should be well aware China's goal of Chinese rejuvenation, rejuvenation, through accomplishing a two Chinese centennial dreams. And it declares to conduct a major country he declared to be a major country who wishes to conduct a new type of international relations for a new era, which was put by President Xi, General Secretary Xi, in his report to National Congress of Communist Party well, quite recently. Now we come to the final page. I put it as tasks, I mean what we have to do for strengthening bilateral relations between Korea and China. This means when we succeed to make tasks accomplished, the bilateral relation will go smoothly for more mutual benefit. If we fail to exercise or implement some of them, Sometimes its impact are so severe as to topple the roots of relations, and sometimes we need kind of plaster. Among them, what matters most is how to substantialize, substantialize strategic partnership in equal, just, fair and just and right direction. That is, needless to say, an indispensable task Koreans should pay more attention and make more efforts to accomplish. These are all I prepared for this morning. I thank you for your attention and if you have any question and comment on this, I'm delighted to respond it after
15 minutes break. 20 minutes? OK. Not 10, 10 minutes, but 20 minutes break after I'll be delighted to respond when uh, what you raise, a question or a comment. Thank you.